morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we may be few in number, but look, we're occupying nearly every pew in the church because we spread out well. So we're good. We're good. I have been enjoying very much the variety of weather that we're having. Enjoying may not be the right word. It was no pleasure driving home from the trustees meeting Wednesday night, uh, nor to hear that water washed into the church. However, the next day, Thursday, was a beautiful day. And the remarkable thing about Thursday was the way the wind was blowing. And I thought, well, this is a great day following up on Pentecost when the wind of the Spirit blew. And I noticed that behind my house, I have this beautiful variety of trees. And they never looked so wonderful as when that wind was blowing through them and waving them back and forth. And I thought, I'm gonna tell you this, that just like trees look wonderful when that wind blows on them, so our lives become wonderful when the wind of the Holy Spirit blows upon us, amen? Because the Holy Spirit lights us up with life. Otherwise, those trees are just sitting there. But when the Spirit blows on them, oh, they wave and give glory to God. So I pray that this morning, the wind of the Holy Spirit blows upon us and fills our lives with the joy and with the abundant life. Amen? Amen. Our liturgist for this morning is uh, Bobby. Oh, say, by the way, um, I have a special gift for somebody. Um, <laughs> it's a curious thing what winds up in a thrift shop. Apparently, somebody uh, had a whole lot of leftover Bibles that they brought to the thrift shop. And I looked through them, and some of them are of such fine print. You know, it would almost be injurious to your eyes to read them. But I found this one called Good News Bible, right? And it's got nice print, it's got interesting pictures, and so I would like to give this to somebody. I'm going to put it on the table in the back there and offer it to anyone. If you would like to read a fresh uh, uh, interpretation, uh, translation of the scriptures, you will find it in this book. And I'll put it back there. It's Bible Sunday at the church, and you can have this one on your way out. Thank you. It is good to be together this Sunday morning. Uh, yesterday we had the uh, occasion to celebrate the life of Ray Smith. As you know, he was uh, a lay leader. He was the head of various and chairperson of various of the committees of the church and an active Christian man. And we celebrated his life yesterday and his family have uh, met, uh, allowed us to have these flowers from his funeral to um, uh, illuminate our worship today, and we are thankful to his family for that. In the back, as you leave on the um, table, you will find a four-page report from Annual Conference. Pastor and I had the um, privilege of being the pastor of your church and the lay member to the Annual Conference. The conference was held Wednesday, June 1st to Friday, June 3rd, and this is a synopsis of what was covered. It also makes reference to the website that you could go online to, um, the Baltimore Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church, BWC UMC, and then click on the annual conference and, and just about everything that is in this report is there, even to the point where if you look at the different bullets of blue, if you click on that, it would automatically take you to that report if you wish to look at that report further. Um, those copies are in the back of the church and Peggy is also going to include the links and the report in the connection for this week so you can check, check that. Today is going to be a glorious day because we're going to have VBS. And we're most thankful to the pastor and to uh, Donna so that we don't have to have our umbrellas and our rain boots on 
to enjoy uh, VBS outside. So we're going to be having VBS inside. And um, so please join us from 4.30 to 6.30 today so that we might um, have socialization with one another and fellowship and also be able to uh, put on the armor of God, which is this, this year's theme. We're uh, going to also have um, uh, uh, meetings this week. The first meeting is the uh, United Methodist Women. Um, their meeting is uh, Monday at 11.30. They bring a drink and a lunch <coughs> together and share that before their, their business meeting and activity. So if you're available on Monday at 11.30. Also this week, we have an SPRC meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. That's Wednesday the 15th. And on Saturday the 18th, we have the flea market. And the flea market is 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you um, need a table, please come to the flea market because tables are available. They're $10 a table at the flea market. And if you don't have any anything that you wanted to offer at the flea market, you can always visit the thrift shop uh, because it will be open and I'm sure the different uh, table vendors would appreciate your going through their wares and finding that special thing that you needed to add to your collection. We are glad uh, and, and extend our welcome to our, uh, all the people who are joining us online today in our recorded service. We are happy that you're with us and, and love that you have joined us spiritually in the words, the prayers, and the music of our worship service today. We also invite you to join us in person at, at our worship services at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Only God knows what may come out of our gathering together. It is the time in our service to greet one another and pass the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. May we pass that peace by, by greeting one another from afar. And all those online, we greet you also and, and thank you for your peace to us. We do all of this because this is the day that the Lord has made.
says the moon shines full at God's command, you know that on Tuesday evening, there's going to be a strawberry moon, right? There's going to be a moon bigger than you've seen all year, than we've seen all year. And I assume that it's going to be um, um, juicy enough to eat. And I don't know why they call it a strawberry moon. But in any case, don't miss that on Tuesday evening. The weather guy last night said it's going to be a clear evening so we can go out and see the wonders of our God. And when we see that, we just could uh, sing again. I sing the almighty power of God. You know why? Because we need to feel the almighty power of God's presence with us so that we don't get overcome with the stuff that comes upon us, with our troubles, with our cares, with our burdens. But we need to sense the almighty power of God. So, oh, God's power is seen everywhere, like in that little red-headed bird that was pecking on my bird feeder this morning. And I gave thanks for that. Um, like that grass on my lawn that keeps growing. I give thanks for that. So I have something to do every Wednesday evening. I can go out and mow it. It's a great day. It's a great day. I give thanks for the mighty power of God. Indeed, the heavens declare God's glory. And so let us uh, share a bit of this video that we may be a part of declaring God's uh, glory as well. <laughs> Would you join me in the call to worship from Psalm 8? O oh Lord, our Lord, is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. celebrates our God.
seated. I share the call of confession with you. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. May we silently offer our prayers of confessions of any thoughts, words, or deeds, whether they be intentional or unintentional. May we offer them to our Heavenly Father for our forgiveness. Would you join me in the unison session? Living and loving God, who spared not your Son, but sent him to show us the way to life, we see all around us the evidence of the results of hatred and violence. We confess any presence in our hearts of that which is not in your heart and may you to purge us and make us clean. With the joy of your forgiveness ever before us, we thank you, O God, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can see in the risen Christ a glory like a bright morning star lighting up the darkness in our lives and in our world. May we turn our faces to the sunshine of your love in Jesus' face, that our lives may reflect your glory. Fill us, gracious Lord, with your power, love, and power. Amen. Would you join me in, Lord, I want to be a Christian? We're going to sing the first and second verses. Praying. 
I met one of my fellow pastors the other day who was telling me about the community in which his ch church is uh, placed in North Baltimore and some of the circumstances of life in that area. And I asked, well, what are you going to do in response to that? Because I was talking to him about our sandwiches. And I thought, well, if you're doing something, we can bring sandwiches today. And he says, what we're going to do is we're going to have a because he says, we, that is he and the other pastors in the area, believe in the strength of prayer. Prayer can make a difference. Prayer will make a difference in this community, he says. And so we're going to walk through it. And we're going to be praying as we go. So I don't know about your sandwiches. Maybe you can bring that when we do a clothing distribution, because that will work out better. But on it'll be next Monday, uh, the day after Juneteenth, they will do this prayer walk that we might change the lives of uh, people in the community, that we might change the nature of the community because we believe in the strength of prayer. And I said, we'll be praying with you. On the 20th of June, our congregation will be praying with you, my brother, uh, so that um, you know, as you walk, we'll be praying. And I'll bring you more details on that next week. But today, what we do is we pray. Because we believe, we are sure, we are confident, we have faith in the efficacy that is the uh, changing of our lives by prayer. And so we bring our joys and our concerns. Um, but you know, we ought to thank God for everything before we ask God for anything. Um, joys that we might express, Peggy? We're here. <laughs> Let us greet Peggy and Pastor. Amen. 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 We love you. We just love you. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here together. Other tools that we might express. Well, let us know that, uh, Lord, we just uh, express to you out of our hearts the joy of all that you have given us in the past week. And uh, we turn to hear our uh, Joy's Concerns report. We have a uh, Joy Maryland calendar's birthday is thir this coming Thursday, June 16th. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, are asking, um, Sandy is requesting from the card ministry, if everybody could send Marilyn a card for her birthday or give her a call uh, to wish her a happy birthday. She has been out of her house only two times in the past year, and she really misses her ability to come and worship with us. Uh, and so if you could remember Marilyn um, this Thursday in your prayers uh, and wishing her a happy birthday, that would be um, most appreciative. Under concerns, uh, Harry Wilhelm has uh, contacted us uh, Diane and Jason Giacubino um, uh, had um, uh, a fire. Their house completely burned down and they have lost everything. So if we can keep that family in our prayers. Um, Harry was a, a, an instrument of offering our thrift shop to them uh, for clothing or uh, small household goods. And uh, we are thankful for his um, thinking of that to, to extend our, our thrift shop to them to help them um, uh, uh, replace some of the things that um, they might need. Also, uh, Stan Watlin is going to have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. He's feeling a little under the weather and uh, he's not sure what is uh, happening. So. Um, we pray for him at his doctor's appointment tomorrow. Also, Sharon's husband, Greg, is doing better. Uh, none of us like knowing that we can't come home, and um, but he um, is doing better and get him regulated so that they can send him to a rehab to help him um, walk again. Um, so we're uh, happy about that. Also, we have our chemotherapy group that we always keep in, in our prayers. That is Jim Smith, Doris Talbot, and Mary Lou McKay. 
We also were including Katie Ferguson, that is Sandy's cousin, um, uh, but she is not doing chemo and radiation right now because of the, the setback that she had, but she is doing better and she thanks you for all of your prayers. Um, they have been able to take her out of ICU and, and she is now able to eat small portions of food. So that in itself is a joy and a blessing and, and we are thankful for those uh, prayers for her progress. Also, uh, Phyllis Martin's neighbor, Tony Paloff, um, she uh, suffered a fall and has been taken to the emergency room as a result of that. She has a 10-year-old uh, daughter named Bella, so our prayers are not only for her, uh, her neighbor Phyllis, but for Tony herself and her daughter Bella, who I'm sure is concerned about her mother having to go to the hospital. We have travel concerns for Jeremiah and Christine, who are returning from their trip to Connecticut, and uh, we hope they are uh, had a wonderful time and are ready to come back and get back into their routines. We also offer prayers for uh, Larry. Larry's surgery is uh, Tuesday, June the 14th, and we are prayerful that this uh, hip replacement will be successful. Donna shared with us that uh, Kathy is still experiencing uh, not being able to see out of that eye. They are encouraged. She is on a particular medication to help that heal. Um, because of the, uh, the blood needs to be absorbed by the body, it could take up to two months. So our prayers are certainly with Kathy and Donna as uh, they try to help uh, Kathy's condition. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns anyone would like to share? We might uh, share a prayer in your heart. Um, we invite that opportunity. Um, we, uh, we do keep Kathy in our prayers. It's a distressing thing not to have that sight return. We, we certainly want to be mindful of her. And we want to be in special prayer for uh, Larry um, leading up to Tuesday and uh, Tuesday surgery and the recovery recovery uh, soon thereafter. I mean, after all, we gotta get Larry back on the track <laughs> so that uh, good things can happen uh, around the church here. Just Larry, just know that on Tuesday, our prayers with you uh, in your surgery. Let us then uh, look to the Lord, good and gracious God, our Creator, you who formed us and placed us in order that we may be on this earth, in order that we may enjoy the life that you have for us, and in order that we may share the goodness of that life with one another. Lord, we thank you and we praise you that your design for life is so rich, so full, and so wonderful. Ah, it puzzles us constantly why there are things that get in the way of that. But it happens. Sometimes it's us that gets in the way and we ask you for your forgiveness. Sometimes it seems to us it's others that get in the way and we ask your love in our hearts to be able to forgive them. But whatever it is, Lord, let your light shine brighter. Let your goodness be more magnificent. Let your way be more miraculous than anything that would stand in the way of the goodness of life for us and for all others. We bring to you, Lord, uh, our prayers for those who are struggling forward. Be with Stan, Lord, who walk with uh, faith and with uh, courage to that doctor's appointment tomorrow and find there that which he may face or that which he may discover, but that which is Lord for him and you together to walk through and to find healing and strength in the midst of. You know, Lord, our prayers and be with Larry on Tuesday and we pray your spirit just be so rich with him.
And his body is so prepared for that surgery that it all goes so wonderfully well. It just knits together wonderfully. And his recovery is as smooth as simple. We pray, O oh Lord. We look to you for others, Lord, who, who struggle to find their way. Be with Kathy, Lord, as uh, she looks for the light, the vision to be restored to her. Be with Donna as uh, she accompanies her in that and, and that reassurance that comes with your spirit being there as well. We look to you, Lord, for, for those who, uh, who struggle on trying to find health. Be with Norm, Lord, that it may be well with him as he continues in that long, long series of treatments for his ails. Be with uh, Mary Lou, be with Jim, and others that we mentioned. Help Greg, Lord, to recover his strength. In all of these, Lord, we just know you're the one who walks by the seashore and heals, touches, and cures people that you see. You're the one who went on to the hillside and folks gathered around so you could touch them and heal them. And so, out of your love comes our love and our prayers that you touch and heal and strengthen and cure. Be with our nation, Lord. We are a mess. And we pray that you might heal us. Uh, calm our spirits, O oh Lord. Take away our hate and our violence. And help us to find that which is a blessing for one another. Help us to find the way of blessing and to walk in it. We pray your comfort, your strength, and your healing for us and for all people. In Jesus' name, and we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So there was this uh, anthem that I found recorded, of Holy, Holy, Holy. It would sound like a good Trinitarian anthem to me. Um, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, we will save that for another time. Instead, let us turn to the uh, reading of the scriptures this morning. Testament scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel, for his part, brought the firstlings of his flock, their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was angry, and his countenance, uh, countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why have your count countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen. 
Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you, you can look, um, as the sermon title uh, suggests, that um, I'm working on a series of sermons. This is a season of Pentecost, so we keep working on what it means that God uh, gives us the Holy Spirit that uh, Jesus uh, uh, directs that Holy Spirit to be um, distributed among us for our good. And I think that, that what I want to do is to probe out what that means. So I looked at the scriptures, you know, there's a lectionary thing that describes what scriptures should be read each Sunday. I don't always follow that. I would look at and see what is this for the next six weeks. And it seemed to me that those scriptures, um, in each of them, Jesus is teaching us how to live. Now, the interesting thing is, what we have to do is to take what he said, what was it, 2,000 or so years ago, and apply that to now. Some things are the same, because some things never end, never change, they just keep happening. Other things change a lot, right? And so what we have to do is to take his words and fit them into, no. Rather what we have to do is to take our lives and our living today and to see what Jesus' words have to say about that and to figure out how it is that Jesus is teaching us to live today, all right? I suspect it's not too different from the way he taught people to live when he talked to them at that time, right, in person. But I also suspect, because Jesus himself said so, that it takes some application and some work on our part. I think it's really interesting that in the Gospel of John that we read this morning, in that 12th verse of the 16th chapter, uh, Jesus says, um, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. Right? Has anybody ever said that to you? Right? There's more to this than I can tell you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what is it? I think I want to know. Right? Um, like when, oh, I don't know, when somebody first started teaching you how to drive, you know, they would say, well, it's this, it's that, but there's more to this than you ought to know. And some of those things you don't find out until you experience them for yourself, correct? Um, and, 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 and Jesus says, Jesus said, I want to keep on telling you things. I want, I, want, I want you to know that there'll be things that I'll be telling you in addition to what I've already told you. Wow, that's, that's a burden for us. Because we haven't mastered everything that he told us already. And here he says, I'm going to tell you more. He says, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Not as some 
spooky presence, but as a means of further understanding what I have to say to you. And I think we ought to call on that Holy Spirit when it is that we wonder, well, what would Jesus say about this? You know, and you got to look back into the scriptures and try to, and, and say, come on, Holy Spirit, give me a, give me a sign. Give me some lead. Send me a, a verse. Right? Put a vision in my brain. Let me hear something that I can better understand. And I think Jesus wants to do that through the Holy Spirit. So what I want to try to do for the next six weeks um, is to take the words that Jesus says and, and um, go over them together and then to see how we might apply them into our lives, how we might connect them with our life situations. Now, I don't know how much Jesus might have to say about gas being $5 a gallon. Except I do know this. A friend of mine named Ron, a neighbor, one of the best guys, couldn't ask for a better neighbor, met me in the giant the other night at the grocery store. We're both standing in line together. And of course, he immediately starts complaining about how much he's got to pay for his groceries. And then he goes from there to complain about the gas. And you know what he said to me next? He said, sir, he always calls me sir, I, I guess because I'm clergy. And he says, sir, how am I going to pay my tithes? <laughs> and my mouth dropped because I never thought about that. Prices go up. How am I going to pay my tithes? I had thought, if the prices keep going up, how am I going to afford to keep buying boxes of cereal to bring in here for sale? That had occurred to me. And so when the price of gasoline goes up, we hear again Jesus saying, love your neighbor. Right? We can't forget loving our neighbor just because we got to pay more for gas and cornflakes. But but we still are asked. See, so I think maybe even in little obscure things, like all those spiders that keep coming into my house and bothering my wife, so I have to go chase them down. I think all those little things, I think God has a word for us to say. I think that's the part of the uh, uh, better or worse clause of the marriage covenant, I think, chasing spiders. I don't want to chase spiders. But I do want to help us understand. I want, I, want to, I want to understand myself how Jesus is telling us how to live at this time. And so, um, let me share some things with you. <laughs> it took so long to explain what I'm going to do. I don't know if I have time to do it. <laughs> I, I will try. I will try. <coughs> I don't know about you, but my heart uh, has been broken during this week hearing some of the testimony of the children and parents uh, from Evaldi, Texas. And the verse that come crying into my mind is that verse that Bobby read from the book of Genesis, the Cain and Abel story. Um, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And I just kept hearing that again and again and asking myself, Lord, what are you saying? What does that mean? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. We know that it's a part of a larger story. It's the story of uh, Cain and Abel, the first murder of the Bible, right? It is where the concept of sin enters the Bible um, because uh, it gets introduced just before the story is told. Uh, sin is at the doorway, the scripture says, and um, it is waiting like a crouching beast. 
waiting to take a hold of you. But you can resist it. See, Cain gets angry because uh, he thinks God doesn't love him. I, I don't know. How do you know whether God accepts your sacrifice or not? Some say it's because when, when Abel made the sacrifice, the smoke went straight up. But when Cain made his, it was all swirling around, got in his nostrils, and he had to put the fire out. I don't know. But somehow he got the feeling that maybe God But God comes and speaks to him and says, Look, Cain, if you intend to do good, you will be lifted up. If you intend to do good, you will be lifted up. Keep doing what you're doing. If you intend to be good, you'll be lifted up. But beware, because sin is at the door. Like a crouching beast, ready to grab you. Right? What is it? But you can resist it. He says, it's decision. It's decision time. Just like your parents, Adam and Eve, had their decision time. This is your decision time, Cain. But what Cain does is allow that sin to grab a hold of him. That sin of what? Jealousy. Anger. And takes his brother out into the field and kills him. Immediately after the killing, what happens? Huh? You know what happens? God comes looking. Oh, 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 oh. Accountability. Yeah. God comes looking. Hey, where's your brother? And Cain, what does Cain say? Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Boy, oh boy. We've heard that quote more than once. Am I my brother's keeper? The suggestion is, God, you should be looking at you after Abel. How come you didn't protect Abel? Right? Am I the one that's supposed to protect Abel? Yeah, you should be doing that, God. And God responds by doing what? Punishing Cain. Your brother's blood cries out to me for accountability. And Cain is punished. So saying, yes, you are. It's not a question anymore. You are your brother's keeper. And if the crying out of that blood that we heard testified to again and again, not forgetting all those folks in Buffalo, not forgetting the most recent folks up in Smithsburg, right? No, blood cries out. You are your brother's keeper. So it comes down to us. We are our brother's keeper. It is up to us then to cry out our accountability. Lord, we are allowing the ongoingness of the slaughter of 45,000 people every year. A number is still growing. Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. In the ninth chapter of Genesis, God repeats this. I will hold you accountable for the spilling of blood, he says. I will hold you accountable. Meaning, we are accountable. Jesus, help us, huh? Help us, how do we stand? How do we respond? Oh, with prayer? For those families who have suffered loss, devastating, horrible loss, certainly that, with signs of our mourning. Golly, I think we ought to lower our flag half staff again. Maybe we ought to just keep it there. Remembering Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted to say to people we know we are accountable, and we stand before you, God, to say, We want not this to continue. Our hearts cry out and say, Let there be done something who can't go on just as we are. And another 45,000 people will be murdered next year and the year after. No. No. Something. Something. And comes Jesus. And Jesus says again and again, I have more to say to you than I've said before. And I pray, Jesus, say it now. Say it now loud and clear. 
that we Christians can hear you and you can teach us how to be accountable, how to live out of our accountability. Show us what we should do. When he says it in the, in the fourth chapter of Mark, he says to the disciples, you know, I've been giving you all these uh, parables. And I try my best to explain them to you, but you don't understand it all, but, but you will, you will. And it's, 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 it's interesting, he says it there in the midst of the parables of the sower and the seed that sprouts light and the mustard seed that grows. And he talks about a seed that can be planted. Aha, maybe that's a clue for us. Maybe our accountability is in some seeds that we can plant. Do you think it could be? Maybe it could be. And he talks about this farmer that goes out to spread the seed, right? <laughs> and there, what's the seed stand for? And everybody, it's probably the word of God, right? That is spread out. And he said, in some places it falls on nothing but hard heads. <laughs> and it doesn't produce nothing. Uh, I learned something from that. Don't be a hard head in terms of the word of God. Other places, it, it, it falls on places where there are lots of weeds. And some of us are reading, I heard a lady that already read 130 books this year. I calculated that out. That's more than a book a day, I think. That's remarkable. I don't know why I bring that up, except that there's a whole lot of other stuff growing around. And what, what Jesus wants to say is, let the word of God grow in you. Maybe one of the reasons we don't really understand all that Jesus told us, because we don't let that word sink into our, be, be in our mind and, and, and get all the other stuff away from it. But then, but then Jesus said, well, some of the seed fell on good ground. And it grew. And it flourished. And it produced a great yield. And it was just wonderful. But just to say that there is a wonderful life in store for us. There is a wonderful life where people don't kill each other, and it's a great life for all of us to have. Because it's, what do you say, 60, 80, 100 fold. I have good news for you. I think it's good news. Every farmer I know is planting corn this year. I think that's interesting. I ride my bike out, and ordinarily this time of year, everybody's got stuff planted, but some farm, some fields would have corn, and other fields would have soybeans. I don't particularly care for soybeans, but I really like corn. And field after field is full of corn this year. And I, I, just, I, just, I just lit up with joy when I saw that. The earth yields its plenty. It's meant for us to have. God intends for us to have this wonderful life. So look, right after these three parables, Jesus says, I know you don't understand now, but you will understand. And I think what he meant is, you'll someday understand what the seed is. You'll someday understand how to put that seed in your heart and make something out of it. The very next thing that happens, I mean, the very next thing that happens is that the disciples are out in the boat. And, uh, and you know, comes this storm in the boat. Right? And, and it's all, it's a terrible storm. It's a violent wind that blows. Okay, Jesus, where's your seed now? Right? And it says it's so violent, this wind, that they were threatened with death and destruction. And then they turned to Jesus. Oh, oh, now is a good time to turn to Jesus. There's no atheist in the foxholes, right? And they turn to Jesus and they say, well, don't you care what's happening? Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Hey, don't you care what's happening? And Jesus kind of looks around and wonders what they're so excited about, right? And he just says to the wind, peace, be still. The Greek word for that, be still. I looked this up because I thought that's a key word. That be still, that's important. What he said there, that is the seed. That be still, that's the seed. And what the be still means is to bind someone so it won't hurt somebody else. Be still. Be still. It's that calm and that stillness that Jesus wants us to have. And to say in the midst of all this, don't get overwhelmed by it. But stick with the calmness that comes from the living, loving presence of Jesus. Let that calm be in you. So that, following his direction, 
We never return evil with evil. See, the other thing that rang in my mind during this week is that oft repeated adage. Added, adage? Adage, right? Adage. Um, uh, the only way to repel an evil person with a gun is for a good person with a gun. That sounds to me like an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, I know where eye for an eye came from. That was to diminish the level of violence. Because it used to be, if somebody plucked out your eye, you could pluck out the eye of everybody in their family. <laughs> but then they said, no, the law is, if they pluck out your eye, well, you can pluck out somebody else's eye, and that's fair. But what did Jesus say today? Huh? He said, you have heard of old. And right away, you know, that's not going to work no more. <laughs> right away, he says, you've heard of old life and I too, so do, but I tell you, right, return good for evil. And then he goes on to say, that's when he says these ridiculous things. Stay calm. Stay calm. Don't pick up a gun. He said, don't pick up a gun. Stay calm. And do this. Turn the other cheek. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Huh? If you ask for your coat, give him your coat also. If you're begging for a buck, give him five bucks. <clears throat> if they ask you to walk a mile, walk two miles. Go the extra mile. Well, he says it, overcome it with love. Overcome it with love. Put something in that guy's hand besides a gun. Overcome it with love. Right? Overcome it with love. Because the living love of Jesus is what will prevail. I am not sure what that looks like, but I am quite sure that we're not looking for it hard enough. We don't look deep enough at what causes people to kill. We don't look deep enough into why these things keep happening. Oh, we just work out of the seat of our pants. Well, whoever's paying us to be in Congress, excuse me for saying that. But we don't look at it with the seriousness that Jesus would have us look at it. How do you love your way out of this situation is the question that we have to ask. And our response to that is the same thing I think as our response to everything. We love to the fullest extent of our ability and then beyond. We figure out ways to show more love than anybody has ever seen. We find a way to get love penetrating into everybody's heart and to let that live in them in place of their anger, in place of their hatred, in place of their whatever brings that about. And seek to put in every place persons who will share that love. I pray for that prayer walk on next Monday. Wouldn't it be wonderful if with that prayer walk comes a shower of light on that community. And from that light comes prayer walks all across the country. I don't know whether it's worth walking in Washington anymore, but I do know it'd be worth walking in Catonsville. I do know it'd be worth walking in Colorado, in Texas, in Buffalo, and pray and pray and pray. Lord, they love take over this community. May love prevail. Help us, Lord, to be accountable for the blood of our brothers that cries out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ in our sharing of the affirmation of faith for Pentecost. We believe in God, the creator of spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who
nothing. But we don't do that anymore. So what do we do at this moment? We just, one, we just thank everybody for the offering that you bring that's been placed in the plate at the edge of the church or that you will place as, uh, as you go out. I think the other thing we do is to realize that uh, we, we offer ourselves as well. We take this as a moment uh, to say, Lord, that uh, usually we put something in the plate, but I just want to put something at your altar, and it's our lives. And we just offer them to you that you might use us to be a blessing to others. And for that, we give thanks to our God. We can sing that song. Peace.